Virginia Republican Congressman Randy Forbes joins me now. Congressman, welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you, Martha. It's good to be with you. So let, let, let's kind of break this down a little bit. The president is basically saying that he believes that Republicans should pass a stopgap measure and, that, and go for a bigger deal of what he says would be a balanced uh, combination of increase in revenue that would come from tax loopholes, eliminating those, and spending ostensibly, uh, although we haven't really seen them. Well, that's the key, Martha. You know, the president wanted sequestration. It was his proposal. I thought it was a bad idea. Voted against it over a year ago, but the president won. He got it. Then the president signed it into law. He didn't have to sign it into law. He did. And for over a year, Martha, from August 2011 through the end of last year, the president did nothing to stop it. In fact, he even uh, made sure that his administration couldn't talk about it, couldn't plan for it. As late as September, the Pentagon was saying they were still trying to understand what the law was. Was. In December, they hadn't started. And just a few weeks ago, they start coming out now with all these doomsday scenarios. The reality is that the president uh, could have stopped it. The House of Representatives has passed not one but two bills that would have stopped it. Senate has done nothing. And Martha, when the president talks about a balanced budget, you know, mm -hmm. most Americans think what he means is that we balance the amount of money coming in with the amount of money coming out. Right. That's not what the president talks about with balance. You know, it's interesting because Jay Carney quoted Alan Simpson. Uh, but the other thing that he did not quote that Alan Simpson said was that if this president does not get serious about deficit reduction, including taking on Medicare and Social Security and reforming those entitlement programs, that he will have a failed presidency. Do you think that you know, that, that is a message that, that Republicans have, have done a good job of getting across? Well, Martha, I think that uh, it's very difficult sometimes when you look at the crisis we're facing right now and you look at most of the questions to the president last week when he's out playing golf, it's whether or not he beat Tiger Woods. It wasn't whether or not he's done anything to stop sequestration. Mm -hmm. And the other thing people don't realize, Martha, a lot of times is the president has already spent this money. When he had the stimulus package, it was $825 billion. The interest on that's about $347 billion. If you add that together, that's about the amount of sequestration we're talking about right there. And so it's something the president has to step up to the plate. He has said, and his administration has said, the number one uh, challenge to our national defense is the debt, and yet the president will do nothing but continue to let spending soar out of control. Yeah, but in terms of the, of the GOP message on this, I mean, you guys basically gave in on increasing tax rates. That was the initial thing that, you know, the country was told needed to happen if the president was going to get the balance that he was seeking. Now he's coming back to Republicans and saying, you know, that he believes that, that rich people and the well-connected, actually, let's play this shot. They need to pay more. I want to play this soundbite from yesterday. I'm willing to save hundreds of billions of dollars by enacting comprehensive tax reform that gets rid of tax loopholes and deductions for the well-off and well-connected without raising tax rates. What do you think about that, sir? Well, first of all, Martha, we know what the president does every time is he constantly moves the goalpost. He said that what he wanted was these higher rates. He got them, but that wasn't enough. And we've got to understand when the president is talking about comprehensive tax reform, some of the things he's talking about in there, he's talking about doing away with charitable deductions, which could be a part of that. Could be a part of it, could be doing away with the mortgage interest deduction. Could be a part of it as cap, uh, taxing capital gains and dividends as ordinary income. All of that could have an enormous impact on the economy and uh, the middle class of America. So I think it's time for the president to do what we need to do, which is real in spending, get a control and a handle on his spending, and try to balance and the amount of money that, the government's taking in with what's going on. And when you say that, I would imagine that you mean taking on. on Social Security and Medicare. As Alan Simpson suggested. Well, I, th I think that's an important thing for us to put on the table. And as you mentioned, most of the experts have looked at it and said, we can't sustain uh, mm -hmm. this mandatory spending that we're going to have over the next decade. It's going to bankrupt the country. All right. Uh, Congressman Forbes, thank you very much. Good luck, you guys. Thank uh, you, we'll Martha. see how this goes. Thank you. Good to see you.